back with another jam-packed video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys some non-contact derby drills. In the United States where I am, COVID has started to ease up a little bit, so that probably means that some leagues are going to start practicing again and it's always best to ease into those sort of things for safety reasons and whatnot. So I've come up with a bunch of things that you guys can do um, that are non-contact, social distanced, um, so we can all get back to the derby that we know and love. And these can definitely be used whether we're in a pandemic or not. Um, as fun as it is to hit each other, it's always good to just take a step back and um, work on our skating in general. But this video will primarily be more for coaches or training committees, um, but if you're a skater watching this, feel free to take it to your practice or to your coaches directly if you like one of these drills. If you've never coached practice before, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a great way to get involved with leadership on your team, take a load off of the people that normally coach, um, switch up things for your teammates, and just get yourself involved um, if you really have that passion for growth and improvement. Before I get started, I do want to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button and like this video. I love making content like this for you guys and I definitely need your support. And be sure to stay tuned until the very end because I reveal some of my favorite non-contact derby drills that you definitely don't want to miss. So with that, let's get started. So I like to start off with laps and these can be done distance from each other. Just remember the courtesy rule of telling um, a skater whether you're going to pass them on the outside or inside of the track. And I would recommend doing at least five derby direction laps and five non-derby direction laps. Um, I find that it's helpful to work on both sides, otherwise you'll find yourself really unbalanced um, if you're always skating in one direction. And then also consider doing warm-up laps forwards and backwards because both are really important in derby. Okay, another quick warm-up is to switch directions on the whistle and that can be done from forwards to backwards or from derby direction to non-derby direction. So you're going to start off skating and then whoever is coaching is going to blow the whistle and then the skaters will switch whatever they're doing. So this can be done anywhere from like two to five minutes and uh, you can vary the intensity of the skating like 50% versus 100%. Another thing that I love to warm up with is sticky skates. So bubbles or skull crushers where your feet move in and out, um, scissors where they kind of cross over each other, one foot over the other, and then skiing where both move from side to side um, across the track. Sticky skates are just a great way to familiarize yourself um, with your terrain, um, right? So what floor you're skating on, um, how much grip you have, how much you're sliding. So I definitely recommend this one, especially if you're skating somewhere new that you've never skated before. All right, pace lines are an ages old method of warming up. If you've been playing derby for a while, you've probably done like a million of these, um, but they're honestly great for keeping space between you and your teammates. Um, and then there's variations of the pace line. So the two that, that I like the most are the weaving pace line and the lapping pace line. So for the weaving pace line, the person in the back just weaves through to the front. And then also remember to call out which side you're weaving to, either outside or inside. And then for the lapping pace line, it's pretty similar. Um, the person weaving through is just going to weave through to the front. And then once they get to the front of the line, they'll do a lap to catch up back to the line um, and find their place back in the front. And then the next person in the back is going to weave through, do the same thing and so on and so forth. All right, so stationary warm-ups are another thing you can do to get your body moving. So you can either spread out on the track or make one big circle for this. And I find that it's the most convenient to do stationary warm-ups before stretches. But you basically just do a bunch of standing exercises like um, knee elbow touches, windmills, hip circles, and if you're feeling really evil as a coach that day, you can do up-downs. So those are my recommendations for warm-ups. All right, now we're going to move into like a cardio section and the first drill I'm going to show you is called starts and stops. So the rules for this one are pretty simple. You're going to start, stop, exercise, and repeat about four to six times depending on the length that you're skating because you're not using a track for this one. You're just going back and forth um, across whatever space you're using. So version one of this drill is to use your toe stops. So you start on one side with your toe stops with a running start, skate to the other side, stop with your toe stops using a turnaround toe stop, 
And then the exercise for this is 10 calf races on your toe stop. And you do the same thing going back, and once you get back where you started, you basically completed one cycle, and you do about four cycles. Um, so that was version one with your toe stops, and it's the same process for the next ones, but they have a different focus. Um, version two focuses on your edges, so you're going to start on your edges um, with a duck walk, uh, stop with your edges doing a plow stop, and then the exercise for this drill um, once you've gotten to the other side and stopped um, is 10 side lunges. And then version three is the most advanced. Um, it focuses on backwards edges. So you're going to start backwards and accelerate, stop using a backwards plow, and then your exercise for this is 10 squats. And of course you can change the exercises as you please. These are just ideas. Okay, so that last one was a lot, and next we have seven levels of hell, which I think mostly every coach um, should be familiar with, so I'm not going to explain it, but I will put it in your head as a non-contact drill. This one sucks as a skater, and it definitely lives up to its name, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, this next drill is called Wall to Walls, and this one forces skaters to rely on each other. So everyone's going to start lined up at one wall and while one skater does a lap, aka skates to the other wall and back, the rest hold an exercise to work on muscle endurance or balance. So what I like to use for the exercises are holding a squat, holding a plank, right foot holds, and left foot holds. And then I usually add in a rest option as well. And so obviously how long the skaters hold their position depends on the speed of the skater doing their laps. And I usually run this through um, the line of skaters, take a breather, and then run it back through the line again the other way. Okay, next we have circuit training. I love circuits and what I normally do is Write the exercises on an index card and lay them around the track. I'd recommend doing each exercise for about one minute with 30 second breaks in between. And if you're having trouble coming up with the exercises, the ones that I normally do are squats, push-ups, crunches, calf raises, planks, mountain climbers, donkey kicks, knee elbow touches, windmills, and I usually sprinkle in two rest stations as well. And if you want to go the extra mile, I like to make my index cards with cute little designs on them or just encouraging messages like, keep going, you got this. And lastly for cardio, we have straightaway heel touches. So you skate like normal on the curves and then squat down and touch your heels on the straightaways. Um, you can time this one like for five minutes um, if you want to, or you can make it fun and blast some music and do it for the length of the song. Okay, so next we're going to move into some cone stuff. So first up, of course, I would recommend doing two cone drills. These are great for social distancing and just working on footwork. And I have two videos up already on my YouTube channel about these. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail here, but definitely check those out um, for a bunch of ideas. Next, we have a hopping and jumping agility course. So you're going to lay out some cones on the track that symbolize hopping with one foot, two feet, and apex jumps if you want to spice things up. And I usually tell skaters to just complete it at their leisure and to remember for jumping, start low and end low. And if you feel like you have to fall, please do everything you possibly can to fall forward. Okay, moving on, we have the W drill, and my teammate actually showed me this one, and I love it for working on edges. Um, it's basically an adaptation from a hockey drill, and you're going to set your cones in a W, basically, and I usually put out maybe two W's worth of cones. So the rundown for this one is that you're always going to keep your hips facing forward, and then use your edges to weave up and down around the cones. And you wanna do this one starting from the right and the left, because you get a different feel depending on which side you start on. Okay, and to wrap up the cone drills, I'm going to talk about the cone race drill. So as the coach, you're going to set out a bunch of cones, nice and spaced out, and you're gonna need a lot of cones or at least objects, depending on how many skaters you have, but basically it works like this. So the skaters pick a spot on the wall and that's their base. And once you say go, they're off to the races and they try to pick up as many cones as they can. But the catch is that you can only pick up one cone at a time and you have to bring it back to your base before you can go grab a new one. So once all of the cones are picked up, whoever has the most wins. Last but not least is some fun stuff that you can do with your skaters. As a coach, I feel like it's so important to facilitate that team environment and fun and trust through 
games and enrichment. Um, at the end of the day, yes, this is a sport and you can be as competitive as you want, but we're also human and everyone loves to feel like they belong. So that's my pitch and I will start this off with highs and lows. So basically you go around the group and each person shares their high and low for the week. And it's just nice for people to vent, feel accepted, and for everyone to just celebrate each other's highs. So next we have musical stops, which is similar to musical chairs, but instead of chairs, I would just use cones um, and then take away each cone at each round until you have one cone left and one winner. All right, so this next one is so wholesome and I love doing it at practice. I think reflection is great and it just helps us grow as people. So um, I will share one journal activity that my team did recently that went really well. Um, I passed out some note cards and pencils to everyone and I asked them to imagine themselves at their next bout, um, like their first bout once derby resumes. Um, and I asked them to write down seven things. Number one, what kind of hair and makeup they plan on doing if they choose to do those things. Number two, what kind of derby bottoms they plan on wearing, like if they have a lucky pair of shorts or a fun pair of leggings they wanted to wear. Uh, three, what's their bout day fuel? What are they eating for breakfast that morning? Four, who do they want in the crowd supporting them? That one's my favorite, it's so sweet. Number five, rate your nerves and excitement. For example, four parts excited, six parts nervous. And seven, how many penalties do you think you'll get? So that was just one example that we did and we all shared it um, and it was beautiful, it was fun. And there are so many other journal prompts out there that you can choose from to do with your team. Okay, so next, this was also a hit and it's great for team bonding and just getting to know each other. So everyone, again, gets a worksheet and a pencil, and on the sheet of paper you have these squares with a description in it, and you go around and you talk in like pods of two or three, and ask your teammates if they fit the description in the box, and if they do, then you write their name in the box. And at the end of this activity, I like to gather in a circle and go through each box, have people raise their hands if it pertains to them, and then that way people can fill in any missing boxes. This is just such a great way to get people talking to each other, and I've done two of these so far. I um, just changed up the descriptions in the boxes myself, so feel free to use my template um, or change them however you like. Next up, we have the collaborative obstacle course, and this one is just fantastic, and you could literally do it at every practice um, because it just sparks so much creativity from your skaters, and as the coach, you can just sit back and watch the magic happen. Basically, each person gets a set of cones or chalk if you practice outside, and they designed their own part of the obstacle course. Um, if you have a lot of skaters, you can set them off into teams of like two or three to do this. But basically, once everyone's done designing their part, you talk through the obstacle course as a team um, where each person presents their little part so everyone knows what they're doing. And then you run it through. And this one is so fun because the skaters get a little bit of autonomy here um, and they get to come up with something fun and cool and get to see their teammates try it. And lastly, this one is by far my favorite. What you're gonna do is connect your phone or tablet to a speaker, um, get on YouTube and look up some Zumba, and do some dancing on skates. I promise it will be so fun and you will not regret it, and I personally recommend using the Fitness Marshall on YouTube. His videos are great and fairly easy to follow along on skates. So definitely give this one a try and let me know if you do. Alright everyone, so that's it for my recommendations and I hope these ideas help you in your journey back to Full Contact Derby. I have personally tried all of these practice ideas and I think they can bring some great exercise and fun to your team. If you try any of these for the first time, please let me know in the comments or on social media how they went for you. I love hearing from you guys and I wish you all the best. Remember to be safe out there and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!